let's speak to Simon Maben, who's a lecturer of international relations at Lancaster University here in the UK. Uh, Simon, so far, the truce in Syria uh, seems to be holding. What's your chances of the assessment? Uh, what's your assessment of the chances of it being extended for another 48 hours? Well, fingers crossed things will continue to, to maintain this, this type of positive uh, start. We've seen that there are instances, well, a couple of instances of violence that's been undertaken by, by actors on a range of different sides. But this has largely been low-level violence. We've not seen any, any really substantial acts that would, that would cause a breach of the ceasefire. And I think the longer it goes on, the longer the ceasefire continues without any substantial acts of violence, then I think, I think people can be relatively hopeful. But all it takes, of course, is one substantial act of violence and any of the trust that has been built by, uh, by those on the ground and those externally will be destroyed. So it's imperative that we, we get through the next few days without any of these acts of violence. Indeed. And if we do get through the next few days, then Russia and the U.S. have said that the next step is military cooperation targeting terrorist groups. But the two sides sure. don't see eye to eye on some of the groups working with the more moderate uh, opposition, do they? Namely, Jabhat Fattah al-Sham. That's the former Nusra Front. So how is that going to work? Well, I think that's going to be the first very serious hurdle that has to be overcome. Because let's not forget here. This is a conflict between uh, Bashar al-Assad and a range of, of different opposition groups. And what Assad has done is frame anyone that is opposing him as being a terrorist. So if Russia is wanting to secure Assad, as it seems quite keen to do at this point, then it will continue to suggest that any form of opposition group is a terrorist group and would then, to some extent, accept, expect the US to work with it to, uh, to combat these terrorist groups. So I think finding some kind of common ground, finding some kind of agreement as to who the right type of groups are, finding a, a definition of terrorism that would exclude a range of opposition groups, but also include the, the hardcore Islamist groups that are using violence as a tactic is imperative. And I think that's the first serious hurdle that has to be overcome. Well, the problem, of course, is that, you know, you, you've got these uh, alliances on the ground. Uh, Russia is saying to the U.S., look, you've got to stop moderate groups working with the former industrial fighters. I, I, number one, can they be persuaded uh, to abandon those alliances? And number two, how is that going to affect the fight against Assad's forces? Well, yeah, I think they're two really key points. Because let's not forget that there is growing resentment towards the U.S., who many in Syria feel that, uh, that America has abandoned them, abandoned them to Assad's forces, uh, abandoned them to his air force, and abandoned them to Russia. So they think that this is quite a rich kind of deal, that, that the U.S. has sold them out and now is asking them to, to turn their backs on the groups that have actually been the ones trying to break the blockade. So I'm not in any way condoning the actions uh, of any of those violent groups. But it's easy to see how they would gain traction and support on the ground, given that everyone else seems to have either been either deserting them or bombing them. So I think that's really difficult to find any kind of incentive for, for the Syrian people to turn away from these groups and then to, uh, to turn back towards the U.S., yeah, it, it's definitely a complex picture on the ground. Simon, uh, interesting stuff. Thank you very much indeed for that. Simon Maben from the uh, University of Lancaster there.